Uh, welcome to day two of Black Hat 2015. Uh, I think all the rest of these announcements are useless at this point, but please turn off your cell phones. Uh, we had some issues before. You are currently in um, yeah. South Seas IJ. Dance like nobody's watching. Encrypt like everyone is. DBIB. Up you can side the Black Hat Network by Neil Weiler and Bart Stump. Are you good? Oh, we are good. No, I have to get up there or just get on the mic. Push buttons, man. That's all we do. Yeah. Mash them. Oh, <laughs> he knows the right button to push. All right. So uh, thanks everybody for coming out. Um, it's uh, it's a lot of folks who apparently care a lot more than we thought you guys would. <laughs> I know. Uh, so yeah. So we uh, we decided to call this talk um, "Dance Like Nobody's Watching" and "Crypt Like Everyone Is," and that's because uh, one, we just think that's funny but also because everybody on this network is watching each other uh, or just hurling things at one another. So um, we'll just roll right into it. Thank you, good sir. All right, so who are we? Uh, so I'm Neil Weiler. Around here, everybody calls me Grifter. Um, and over at DEF CON as well. So as it says up there, we'll keep the introduction short and sweet. I've been with Black Hat for 13 years, so uh, I started helping run all the technical operations on site back in 2003. And so uh, that's quite a bit of time. Other stuff that I do in my free time is uh, I help out as part of the training review board for Black Hat, the CFP review board at DEF CON. Uh, I'm a senior goon at DEF CON. Essentially all those things mean I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, and that's why uh, I decided to do this. Mark. So I am Bart Stump. I've been doing uh, Black Hat for about eight years now. Uh, Death Conning, or Death Conning, Gooning for Death Con about the same amount of time as well. Uh, also on the training review board here for Black Hat. Uh, and then in between all that, we both have families and day jobs as well. So again, just kind of a gluten for punishment. Love to do this, and uh, here we are. Yeah. Um, so we figured we would start out with then. So the, the top picture there, is one of the guys who helped out back in 2003. That's a picture of the knock from 2003. So a single Cisco 2600 and a couple of Cisco APs with Orinoco cards jammed in them. Um, you could even see the antennas. They were the ones that you would unroll and like tape to the wall if you, you guys remember doing that. Um, and that is, that's how we ran Black Hat back in the day. So you're talking about a thousand attendees or so. And uh, training wise, uh, maybe a dozen classes, and uh, that's 2004 below. I threw that picture in there because really the only thing that changed, you can see we bought some of those sweet silver Netgear <laughs> A-port switches, so uh, next. And this is now. So uh, how many people had a chance to go into the knock and check it out, take a look or anything? I think a lot of people thought they couldn't go in there. So you could actually, sorry about that, this is the last talk. If you run down there now, maybe you'll make it, I don't know. Or you can stay put, we'll talk about what's on the screen. So um, this is the first year ever that we've allowed people into the knock. So in my 13 years, we've always had the doors closed and we did our own thing. This year we decided to open it up and let people see what we were doing. This actual picture comes from the other night when the UFC fight was on. So we're still working, but we wanted to watch Ronda Rousey, you know, punch another woman until she passed out. Um, and so that's how we do it. We're like, well, we have a lot of displays and a two gig <laughs> pipe from CenturyLink. Let's throw it up in here. I bet we can get HD off of that. Um, all right, jump to the next one. So there's me, cybering. I put on my robe and wizard hat. Um, you can see the wizard hat is up here and some of our mascots. One of the things that I said to Black Hat or UBM, uh, who owns Black Hat, when they asked us, will you let people see? Will we have some additional transparency? Let them see what we're doing in the knock. I said, okay, well, that's fine. You can put us in a fishbowl, but we're not going to do anything different than what we normally do behind closed doors. So that means a lot of blinking LED lights and loud music. Oh, and we forgot. What's that? Oh, I figured it would mess with the camera, so I said, forget oh, we were going to bring the LEDs up and be like <laughs> super obnoxious, more than we already are. Um, so I was in full uh, wizard robe and hat with a power glove on, shouting at the packets to go across the network. And there's like 
CNN on the other side of the glass. <laughs> you know, they're just like, what is, what is happening in here? But to Black Hat's credit and UVM's credit, they said, that's fine. We don't want you to change anything. Do it how you normally do. We're just going to let people in. I said, okay. So that means we'll be sleeping on the floor. What are we doing? And they were just like, ah. So we work really long hours. Um, they built us a little room off to the side, and they put a bunch of couches in it so we could sleep in there instead. So uh, That was the one thing they weren't okay with. <laughs> they like, <laughs> drooling on the floor, floor and snoring. So. Uh, so the NOC team. So the actual, so the network team for Black Hat is made up of 21 you know, industry professionals. So we actually have folks who are from all different companies and they all come in and they volunteer their time. Like they're all volunteers and they're volunteering because Black Hat's network is one of the most hostile networks in the world. Like seriously, you guys are insane. Like, and I think in part that's due to just the fact that you go to a training class earlier in the week and somebody teaches you something really cool and then you immediately try it on your neighbor. Like, it's just like, that was amazing. It's Christ Christmas afternoon, you gotta play with all those new toys. Play, play with the new and toys. What you're doing, so. And so we see that happen. Like all of a sudden a bunch of attacks will start launching from a classroom and, you know, and we're like, we walk in, we eventually figure out, okay, that's the classroom it's in and we walk in and we're like, knock it off. Um, but for the most part, We'll just leave you guys alone. We don't go in there and start killing things or doing whatever unless we think it's going to affect the stability of the network. If that happens, you know, it looks bad on us. What we want is to make sure that you guys have the freedom to do whatever you want to do on the network within reason. Um, we, don't, we, we also can't say whether the traffic that is malicious is actually malicious. Um, I don't want to be the guy who decides because I see something happening, I'm going to shut it down and I end up perpetuating the demo curse on somebody who's up on stage presenting at that moment. Because I'm like, whoa, that looks scary, kill it. And some guy over in you know, the keynote room is like, I'm really sorry, everybody, it worked before. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, so we let you guys just, just go to town. Now, all of these 21 individuals, this is, um, they, they come from all over the place, multiple states, even multiple countries, and they all come in and do it all on vacation. This is their PTO, they take their PTO and they come here and they help out, set up the Black Hat Network and keep it up. And that's the challenge for us, is keeping it up. And you guys understand that that's not always possible. <laughs> um, we do the best that, that we possibly can. What's that? They have medicine for that. They have keeping oh, it up. Gosh. No. Sorry, not again, not again, sorry. I apologize. It's not DEF CON yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're close. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so they, that's how much these people want to be involved in helping out in this network is they're taking their personal time and their time away from their family and they come here and they sit in a dark room and listen to too much EDM and <laughs> hang out with Lyle, our mascot gorilla, and Helga, the sh our mascot inflatable sheep. They're actually the mascots for 801 Labs, which is our hacker space in Salt Lake City, and they come with us everywhere. So. Um, so yeah, so again, all on vacation. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. So, um, our extended team. This year, we decided to partner up with some people. In the past, this network was put together with, uh, I would say, duct tape, but it's actually gaffer tape, like spit and anger. Like you know, like we just, how can we get this thing? We got work, you stupid thing. Um, legitimately, we used like. We were talking to Travis earlier, and he said, "Remember when I used to run the whole network through a triple E PC?" And you know, we all laughed. Like we're like, "Yeah, that was, those were the days." Um, well, we used to do it through for for years through Socris boxes, and so we had the Socris boxes. We run BSD on them, and every classroom got a Socris box, and we wrote custom scripts for them to call home, so we knew if they were up or not, and all this different stuff. But that doesn't scale, so we were like, "All right, we have to do something different. We can't just keep." throwing these Socris boxes all over the place and hoping they work. Like we're literally, people would be running from the knock constantly trying to keep things up. So we decided, okay, let's see if somebody will partner with us, help us out. Uh, Bard's day job, he's an SE for Optiv and they have a really good relationship with Fortinet. So he's like, let me call you guys at Optiv, see what they're, you know, if they're interested in, in coming to Black Hat and bringing some of their gear there. You know, I, I bet they would be. And he's like, hey, do you guys want to come bring your gear and put it on the Black Hat Network, and they're like, yes, like immediately. They're like, yeah, let's do it. Like, and to their credit, they didn't just say like, here's a bunch of gear, 
please put our logo everywhere. Um, they actually sent out their most seasoned folks to sit with us in the knock, and we literally sat side by side um, and figured out how we could you know, keep this thing going, and when things went down, they were right there in the trenches with us, so hats off to them for that. Um, Splunk, we have, we have all, uh, several people who are in the knock, we have relationships with folks who are at Splunk, and they were on board immediately as well. Um, and that was for our operational intelligence, our analytics, what's happening, when is it happening, who's it happening to. And then Ruckus is the wireless provider for the show wireless. So all the wireless that's happening right now during the briefings, is all provided by them. And so this was our first year working with them and I think it went really, really well. Uh, CenturyLink provides two one gig fiber connections to us that we drop into Mandalay Bay and then carve out to the different rooms and everything. Uh, one in Sunnyvale, one in Denver. Initially we were like, oh, well that'll be great. We'll use them for high availability. So we've got, you know, in case something happens. And then we're like, that is a terrible waste of bandwidth. You know, so we're like, let's just, we'll put them active, active, and we'll just see what happens. And you guys just use it. Like, it's like, oh, I'm not slowing down. Okay, great, I'm on it. And then you just start grabbing more and more and more, which it held up to, I think. I don't know if, uh, I didn't hear anybody complain. I said the network was great this year and the speeds were great. Um, what's funny about that CenturyLink thing, too, is that all week they've been sending us emails that literally just come forwarded that say, FYI. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, we're looking through them and we're, you know, somebody said to me this morning, like, hey, should we filter out BitTorrent traffic? And I'm like, well, no, because, you know, we don't know what it is that they're doing with BitTorrent. Maybe they're grabbing the latest release of Kali or something like that. Let's just leave it alone or whatever. And then it's like, somebody just downloaded Game of Thrones, like all, like, all of the last season or whatever. And I was like, I was pretty impressed with how fast, like, you know, they were like on it. You know, they're like, hey, somebody's downloading Game of Thrones. Uh, and so we were, and then we were getting emails that said, oh, there's, uh, we got Zeus traffic flying out of your network. It's freaking everywhere. Like, and we're like, what? Okay, well, let's take a look. And we go over and we're poking around. We're like, okay, it's coming from this room. It's this class. Let's find out who it is. You know, and we walk in the room, you know, like we walk in and we're like, hey, Zeus traffic, blah, blah, blah. And the instructor's like, yeah, it's part of the lab. <laughs> so, he's like, so again, we're like, okay. Like, he's like, yeah, we're, uh, we're hosting some of our labs up on AWS, and I'm like, did they know that you're throwing all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> they do now. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've been getting notifications about what goes on there, and that's like every time one comes in, we're like, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? So, all right, jump to the next one. Let's talk about the architecture. My turn. So, as you'll see here, I'll talk about all the technical stuff, and uh, that's because Grifter's a pretty face, and I'm, I'm gorgeous. Let's they don't put me out front to, to, to see anybody. I like how everybody just starts taking pictures. You think I'm dumb enough to do this again next year, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so, the architecture. So, again, as Grifter said, Fortinet helped us out quite a bit. They, they've got us all kinds of gear, Splunk, Ruckus, CenturyLink. I want to tell all those guys, thank you. Uh, it could happen without you, but it was a lot easier with you. So thank you, yeah, first of all. Let's just be honest. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Like, and that is legitimately, it's like, like we are old school black hats, so we're like, we're not like, oh yeah, we're just throwing logos everywhere, whatever. Like, if it sucked, we would tell you guys. And it didn't suck, so that's just, we're just being honest. So we have got our, we'll, we'll start at the top, our beautiful interwebs. Um, the, the circuits that we use are, again, two one gig links to CenturyLink. One goes to Denver, one goes to Sunnyvale. Totally redundant. So if you blow up one and you send too much Zeus traffic out there, I still got another one in my back pocket. So we can at least have one gig to download Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> When we go from there, we've got a Fortinet 1500D. So this was uh, this is a decent sized box. This is definitely an enterprise grade class box that, that you can use. Um, it, it handles the capacity. We have plenty of, of ports, plenty of throughput, plenty of session throughput, etc. Um, we go down there, and you're going to see everything starts segmenting now. We do, obviously segmentation, segmentation, segmentation. If I can tell you anything from my day job, my consulting days, etc., you need all that segmentation you can get. Uh, Mandalay Bay provides us the backbone across all the classrooms, so basically what they're providing uh, is just patching through to those rooms and there will be some things that may change going forward. Uh, I won't give away those secrets because then you can hack for me and I don't want that. 
Um, um, there's a fun. <laughs> there's plenty of that that'll happen anyway. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are good at that. So uh, as you can see here, we break off the registration network. That's that's my heart. If you're looking at me, that's that's my heart. You can't touch it. You're gonna you're gonna hurt me really bad if you get there. So I need to protect registration as much as possible uh, for other reasons as well. Your guys' data is there, and we've been hearing way too many news stories about people losing data. I'm, I'm not going to be the next news story, I promise you that much. Um, so we protect registration, we put that off on its own site. <laughs> Thank you, that was vile. Um, the registration network is completely segmented, everything happens there. They bring a device on site just in case you guys take down the network, they can still register and print badges and have uh, on-site registration at that point. Uh, then over here on the left, we've got Ruckus. So Ruckus comes off, and you can see a few areas here that we've got taps in as well. That'll come into play a little bit, so, so make note of that. I've got a tap there in between, but when I say tap, we don't have a legitimate tap yet. That's something that I may pull out uh, the wizard hat next year and try and get a, a, another provider to help do some of that so we can get a little bit better visibility uh, and architect this with, with even more tools. Uh, so it looks a lot more shiny. But we've got the Ruckus network off to the left. They've got all their APs. Uh, they're giving us um, a tap in between their network. Uh, we also have a span port coming off of there so we can see all kinds of traffic. Uh, I believe NetFlow, and then we also have con uh, connectivity into their device through the NOC, um, at the wireless controller, so we can see how all the APs are doing, the traffic that's going through them, etc. Over on the, uh, the middle right there, I gotta come look at mine, sorry, I can't read up there. I can't read here either. Oh, that's the wireless controller. Uh, so we've got another 1500D that's acting just as a wireless controller. The 1500D at the top is the gateway, the 1500D down below it is just a wireless controller handling all the APs. The main place that we get APs for Fortinet is during the trainings. Uh, Ruckus again handles all the, the uh, network connectivity and the wireless during the briefings uh, and the main show management, uh, or excuse me, the main show floor. Um, and then over there on the right, uh, we now have connectivity up to the NOC with a gig uh, one gig link up to the NOC so that we can push all the traffic to and from our tools, etc. Um, let's get into some of the tools now. You can go ahead now. Gotta double click it to play. Oh, no, you know. oh terrible. You broke it. So, again, how many people came into the NOC while this starts playing? That's it? So, yeah, I guess you guys should have got in there. Like okay. I said, we're we had a sign this. outside that said, hey, you guys, you can come in, it's fine. Um, but this is OIP. So um, this was, it's an open, it's open source software. No, it's my turn. Oh, okay. You'll get to yours, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, so this is OIP, this is open source software that was created by Utah State University. Um, and it's basically just showing us traffic between hosts and what's going on there. You can see some of those areas light up uh, like pretty dense traffic. The packets are flying back and forth in there. Um, and when we see that, when we see one of these areas here where it starts to really light up, then we're like, okay, something's going on there. You know, like why is all of a sudden, like if we see a sustained, like it looks like a giant lightsaber across the screen, we're like, all right, like we need to do something. And so when that happens, you know, we'll take a look at all of our other visuals and dashboards and stuff like that and figure out what it is that's going on in the network. This also just looks really cool. We like it, I, mean, I don't know. I like shiny things. Um, this here, and sorry we didn't get a screenshot before we ripped out all of the training networks, but this is WeatherMap, again, open source. Um, and what we did was we set up a, uh, a link for each one of the, the training rooms. So every one of those is a training class or the speaker prep room or the press registration. Uh, the show office, all of those things. So we can watch everything that's going on throughout the convention space all in one place and we can see how things are being affected as far as bandwidth and stuff like that. So um, right map now is, all the links WeatherMap are, is using NetFlow data. Yeah. So it's all the NetFlow data across those links. Right. And so what we're doing is we're, we're keeping an eye on it and we're looking for links that are starting to change color, go yellow, creep towards orange, getting closer to red. And then we know, okay, we're running out of bandwidth there, they're starting to peg that out, maybe we're gonna to need to drop in another AP or a bunch of other drops, whatever it is that that classroom setup requires. When we get, when we're doing these classroom setups, there are 53 or 56, I think it should be three or 50 something, 50 plus 
classes that are being taught on the weekends and the weekdays, and they all have different requirements. And they're like, I need my network set up this way. It has to be like this. I need these ports opening to make sure that there's no host isolation. I need to do this, blah, blah. and they send all that stuff to us, and I send stuff back saying, why do you need wired? Because um, it sucks to set it up. Um, and so we, we take all of those requirements, and we put them all together. We know exactly what everybody needs. And so if we do have to go out there and throw additional infrastructure in place, we know what it needs to look like. Let me get the pretty graph. Now. All right. So on to a few graphs. We're going to bore you to death a little bit with graphs. Hopefully not bore you to death, but uh, give you some insight into this. So these are our, this is our bandwidth summary, uh, by, or excuse me, traffic summary by bandwidth and sessions. Uh, this was for the past seven days, so obviously some of that's going to be a little bit more blank at the beginning when we didn't have much. Uh, and it looks like you guys pegged out on 8.3 at 250 gigs of data. So uh, that was Monday. That was new training courses. So when you see that peg out, that doesn't really surprise me too much. If it was a new day of trainings, we had people downloading Tally, downloading all the tools, downloading VM images, etc. So... Uh, that's not a big surprise to yeah, me. Game of Thrones, like it wants to <laughs> Game of Thrones, week. apparently. Um, that's, that's not too anomalous, I would say. So um, there's just a quick view of all that. I'm going to fly through some of these really quick. It's some really good information just for you guys. We wanted you to, again, give you the visibility. But I also want to say this is this is very informal. Uh, and somebody yell at me if you guys have a question because we can go yeah, through and we'll leave a few questions. plenty of time for questions at the end because we want you guys to just shout at us and we'll, we'll try to tell you as much as we That's what I can. wanted. That one. Uh, top websites. So top allowed websites by bandwidth. Uh, so <laughs> I really appreciated this. Um, the very top one is actually Xbox Live. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, thank you, buddy. Uh, so so our, we, I don't think that this was all our volunteers. We have so the network team, and then we have another group of team that does the, the conference ambassadors. You're, they're the guys that you see. Uh, directing traffic. They're the ones that put everything in your beautiful bags for you and did all that kind of stuff. Um, these guys have an Xbox One next door to the knock, uh, and they didn't do a damn thing this show, apparently. So, because um, <laughs> 150 we have the evidence right, right here. It's right there. <laughs> so, Xbox Live, uh, there was a bunch of Windows updates, which again isn't surprising, being that Windows 10 came down uh, the day before. I'm sure people were just connecting it. Uh, downloading Windows 10 because that's the next new thing. If you didn't hear about it, it's it's beautiful. Slash sarcasm. <laughs> top applications. So, uh, top applications by bandwidth. We've got HTTP. One of the things, and I've got a couple other uh, slides in here that'll show you this. Uh, one of the things that you guys are starting to do uh, that, that didn't necessarily always happen in the past, which was surprising before. Uh, you're probably passing 80% uh, of the traffic as SSL. I'll show you in some of the other slides coming up, which means people are encrypting stuff finally. People are doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, everybody give your pat, yourself a pat on the back because uh, I can't see it, and that's that's a good thing at this point, obviously. You want to keep that privacy. Um, you Think about how it would look if those conference associates had downloaded those games over SSL. I mean, it would be amazing. It would be beautiful. <laughs> So applications by session, obviously DNS is going to be there. We had 40 million DNS requests, it looks like. Uh, HTTPS, HTT, or HTTP, and SSL are our main by session. Ads. So this is an interesting thing. Um, top four out of the, the four out of the top five websites that were allowed by requests were advertising sites. So that says something about the internet today, not necessarily anything that you guys are doing incorrectly or anything that any of us can really fix, um, but, but four of the top five sites that were requested were all advertising. So plenty of stuff pulled down there. Good old botnets, um, plenty of botnets that came flying through here. Uh, the interesting thing that I would say about this, this slide right now is from trainings. Um, so it was taken, yes, not yesterday, I believe Tuesday. Um, during the briefings, these have actually gone away. There is no botnets that I have seen during the briefing, so which which is a little surprising. I thought that we would have seen a lot more. Uh, everybody's infected. It seems like um, I guess well, I guess thirteen hundred. Not bad. Not terrible. 
malware. So you can go through there and look at all the malware that was passed. There's uh, all kinds of different stuff. I won't sit here and bore you and read <laughs> number four. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All that Zoop stress. So remember, <laughs> guys, when you connect to the Black Hat network, you're connecting to the same network that other people have connected to, everyone going down the line. So, you know, use protection. Thought <laughs> <laughs> he was kidding. So, tickets. We actually opened up a ticketing system this year, mainly for the trainers. A few other people used it. We used it internally as well. Um, well, they could actually just send us an email, the trainers. Uh, this, was, this was us trying to take out the middleman. So uh, in the past, the trainers used to have to go out the hallway and find somebody. We used to post up a volunteer outside every room, basically, so you could grab somebody really quick. They'd call us on the radio, and we would do as much as possible to find out what was going on, obviously, at that point. We tried to speed things up a little bit. We're trying to, uh, I wouldn't commit to an SLA at this point, uh, but we're definitely trying to, to speed things up uh, and make this process a lot smoother for everybody because it obviously affects you guys as attendees as well as it does the trainers, us, our name, our image, Black Hat, UBM, Mandalay Bay, everybody who's really involved at that point. Uh, just kind of gets a black eye if we're sitting there on a down network forever. Um, so the ticketing system was actually pretty big to us. Uh, helped out quite a bit. What else do you want to talk about before I... No, you're fine. I think... Uh... We, I guess questions. Does anybody have questions? We're just going to go straight to that. Because right after we leave this stage, we have to get back to work. This show has to be torn down. There's a bunch of network gear that's sitting in all these halls everywhere. And if we want to get to DEF CON, we got to get back to work. So um, so questions, bring them out. I actually, like, is anybody from Fortinet, the team that helped us out, or Splunk? Is anyone like in the room? You should come up here. Let's take questions. All right, yeah. On uh, OIT, what was that like? So the thing about OIP is it's it's all, so the size of the packet is determined by, or excuse me, the size of the dot is determined by the size of the packet, and then the color of the dot determines the protocol. So red, yellow, green, uh, our TCP, UDP, ICMP, etc. Uh, so that one didn't necessarily look like anything that was terrible at the end of it. Um, and just somebody sending larger packets, probably downloading something or whatever. So uh, that's the thing is it looks all pew pew and there's a lot of things going on there. Um, but it's just a quick visual indicator. You can see when something blows up. You can see when one host starts scanning everybody. You'll see a ton of small packets just hitting everybody. Uh, so it's just that quick visual cue to be able to go look at something right. else. But I'll give you an example. So like last year, we were using OIP as well. Um, we we're not doing as much rate limiting per client as we were this year and stuff, just again, due to the gear we were using and stuff. But there was one point where it was like, a little after seven o'clock in the morning, we're all sitting in the knock and all this stuff is up, but we're just sitting there and it's quiet. Like there's like nothing going on in the network. And then all of a sudden this like section of the OIP just lights up. Like it's like, whoa, like I was like, holy crap, what is that? I mean, where is that coming from? And we look and we find it's coming from one of the classrooms. So I'm like, okay, which class? We look it up, it's this one. I go into the class and like, you know, it's, it's early and I figure someone's probably doing something they shouldn't do. So I just walk up to the door and I rip the door open. Rip! Like, you know, and I'm just like, like come in like Kramer, like whatever. And there's a dude in there and he just like whips around and then he just goes, tap, tap. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I just went, what the hell are you doing? And he was like, oh, I'm just, uh, I'm just pulling some stuff down from my house. And I was like, from your house? And he's like, yeah, I just, Grabbing a bunch of stuff from my house. I'm like, well, stop before the classes start. And he's like, all right. <laughs> and it lights up again. So it's just a visual, an immediate visual indicator that something's going on. And then we say, okay, what's happening over here? That, you know, this year we were doing significantly more rate limiting. Um, everybody seemed to be okay with that as far as per client. Um, and it worked out really well. In the past, it was just like if somebody decided they were going to eat up, you know, a good chunk of the, the bandwidth, we'd go hunt them down and be like, please stop. Or, uh, you know, even this year on certain things, uh, people were lighting up. They were like, oh, I'm just going to start scanning the whole Internet and stuff. And we'd just go in and be like, you're not really doing a lot of, you know, nothing. there's nothing we really care about there, but you're just making a lot of noise. Can you stop? You know, uh, and so... Or just it just helps us, you know, understand what's going on in the network, so it's nice. 
So yesterday I noticed on the Mandalay Bay Wi-Fi that the Google search seemed to be blocked. I was wondering if that was the kind of thing you would know about. On the Mandalay Bay Wi-Fi? Yeah. So Mandalay Bay Wi-Fi, we don't touch. Mandalay still runs their corporate network and their yeah. resort network. Uh, the only thing that you would see from us is uh, the Ruckus, uh, the Black Hat 2015 SSID is us, and then any of the training room courses. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. I couldn't speak to Mandalay Bay Wi-Fi. And for that note, we don't block anything outbound. Literally zero. I, I mm -hmm. Fortinet wanted to come in blocking stuff and telling us that we were going to be crazy and they really needed us to be over secure and, and it was uh, it was awesome and it's anywhere else you would do it i just can't do it here i, I can't see you guys walk i would just like leave them alone let, let them do what they need to do so, and get out of control so do you think it was just someone fooling around on that wi-fi or? i mean look at all these fools in this room <laughs> <laughs> sure oh my gosh you guys I it's, swear. it's very possible but but yeah i definitely couldn't speak to the mandalay bay wi-fi i know a guy though yeah <laughs> Actually, I guess we should say that. So the Mandalay Bay IT team, there's a guy, Doc, who runs around here. And Doc was awesome. Like, any, like he's the one who handles everything that we need. So we're like, we need drops here, we need drops there. Or I, I don't know if Doc slept this week. Like, and he was freaked out, man. Like, he was like, well, okay. But you know, I know what's gonna happen, and you know this is going on, and this is going on, and then, and, and, and you guys are hackers. And so, like, and we're just like, be cool, Doc. Stay cool. Uh, you know, and so we had to talk him off a ledge a couple of times because he was freaking out about, uh, well, basically what you guys do. So, <laughs> um, as we put in the description, like I'm trying to talk to people about, you know, what we're doing with the network, and I'm like, you know, like security professionals is just corporate speak for hackers. I mean, a lot of the people who are in this room are doing this because they love it. I think the industry is still young enough that a lot of us are doing this because we love it, and so. You, you know, it's like there's a lot of hacker spirit in here, and so it's uh, like I said, when you learn something new, and there's some trainer standing up in front of a room, and he goes, "Oh, have you ever done this?" And you're like, "I have never done that, but I'm about to." <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's crazy. Um, yeah, you guys, you know, do not love that paper. <laughs> Who else? I know there's questions in here. So you said, how do we choose our volunteers? Um, so, so a lot of the folks who are here, uh, a lot of the conference associates all come from a, one particular university um, out of Phoenix. It's UAT, University of Advanced Technology. Am I saying that right? Yes, or thumbs up, yeah. Um, and we've been working with those guys for years. One of the trainers at Black Hat is a professor there. And so we had a relationship there where we're just like, we need a lot of people who, you know, will understand what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish. They're, you know, they're all getting their degrees in network security. Um, and so they come and help out and they get to learn and audit classes and attend the briefings and do those things. And then when they're taking off, we, we, they all get a copy of every one of the talks and Black Hat provides that to them. Um, we, so with that one, they have to write an essay. Am I correct, Patrick? Is that, that when initially when you did it, I know it's years. Did, did you uh, ever have to? Did you write? Yes. A quick brief, he says. <laughs> I wrote a quick brief. So, I trust yeah, that so they're usually they have to be, I think it's like the top X percent of their class, their grade point average has to be a certain thing, and then they also have to uh, write some kind of essay that says why they think it would be beneficial to come out here and do you know, what we do. As far as the network uh, folks, Probably half of that team comes out of Utah from Salt Lake City, and that's where we're from. Yeah, so um, probably half of that team's out of Salt Lake, and that again is because that's where we're from. Uh, we're also on the board for uh, 801 Labs, which is the hacker space in Salt Lake City, uh, which is run by DC801, which we also do, um, and all of these guys that are you know around the door over there. So uh, we know them; they're known quantities. Um, other Folks who join the team over time are some of those students who have now gone out and gotten professional jobs and they're in careers and they, you know, people that we trusted for the time that they were coming, you know, as a conference associate and now we bring them onto the network team. Um, and others are just people who came up to us and said, hey, I would really, really like a shot at like hanging out there with you guys and, you know, we're, we find out who they are and vet them and uh, if people vouch for them, then, you know, we bring them on. So if we have spots, normally we'll 
just start putting out the word. Who knows somebody good? Like, who can handle the pressure? Because <laughs> it is a lot of pressure. Um, you guys are vicious when you can't get your network access. So you can't get your way. Yeah. That too. Um, so no real magic. It's, it's, yeah, it's just uh, a bunch of friends. Mostly word of mouth. <laughs> yeah, mostly word of mouth. That somebody's friend of a friend. Or again, they just come up and introduce themselves and say, I want to help you guys out next year. What do I have to do? Yeah, so. so we'll talk after. Yeah. <laughs> Who else? So where and how did you implement host isolation? So host isolation, so that, that's a tricky thing because in the training classes, I can't, I can't implement host isolation. So hopefully because you're sitting next to the guy, there's a little bit of human interaction, you're not going to do too much crazy stuff. Uh, but we have to leave that open, obviously, in the training rooms because the trainers bring servers that you need to connect to and get all your information that way, uh, pull down ISOs, whatever he's doing, VMs, etc. cetera. Um, on the wireless network, we, we absolutely implement host isolation. Uh, Ruckus actually brought, a, brought a, uh, another group of guys. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of RG Nets with them. And RG Nets does some pretty cool stuff that they basically isolate everybody. Uh, they can do on the fly, uh, isolate users into VLANs. And so what we did was we chopped up those VLANs and we put just a couple of people in each VLAN. So at least reduce that attack surface. Um, but, but mainly it's done on the, the wireless just to keep you guys from each other and you don't see anything too crazy. Uh, the training courses, there's no hype host isolation in the classroom. Uh, but you cannot go from classroom to classroom, that's all. Um, it wasn't always that way, which is anyway, it was interesting. More? Somebody said that one here. Yeah, so, so what do you guys find most useful when you're monitoring the network between tap or span ports, uh, NetFlow, or just regular old SNMP? All of it. They all have their place, absolutely. Everything, every tool deserves a different uh, visualization, or, or excuse me, different perspective into the network. We have, we have all of the above in yeah. the network. We're using all span, we're using all... <laughs> Um, SNMP as when well. You bring, when you bring 21 uh, guys and girls that are um, in and they're used to doing things certain ways in their environments and stuff, and they bring different talents to it or uh, you know knowledge about different tools, they're like, hey, I can stand up this, or if you give me this, I can put up that. We can get this information out of these different tools. Everybody's got their favorite you know things, and and that's great, and we love it. We run a ton of stuff. Because you know one might be just slightly better than the other, or again, if you're, if we run in shifts, and so uh, seven people on shift at a time, and if that person is more comfortable with whatever it is, and and an issue does arise, we want them to be using whatever tools they're the most comfortable with. So. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> you you are asking. Come up here and tell them, man. Yeah. Wait. So when you, when you, sir, can you clarify? Are you saying how long does it take for us to start planning the network, or from the time we start? We got here Thursday. So is that what you're saying? Like when when we kick this off? Um, so, I see what he's digging for here. He's digging yeah. for some credit. Everybody, that's Kevin Howard. That guy helps. <laughs> he helps a lot. It's all me. <laughs> I honestly do every, there's there's a lot of our guys here in this room, a lot of them are huddled over there in that corner, I don't know who else, I can't see everybody, but uh, I, we wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for those guys. So before we get started on this little kick that he's trying to get some credit, I'll, uh, I'll say that and thank you, first of all. Thank, thank you guys, thank you, we love you. So setting up the network beforehand, there's... Uh, <laughs> Last year was a lot worse than, than it had been in, in uh, future years, so to this year. <laughs> uh, last year we had quite a bit of uh, equipment with all the Socrus boxes, and we started two months in advance, Lean. Wow. Your, your, your garage was full of Socrus boxes and Pelican cases for about two months, so we need to thank his wife as well for allowing that to happen. <laughs> yeah. um, this year we started about a month out. It was a little shorter than I wanted to. There were some things that we... Uh, we had to get equipment from Fortinet. They had to do their thing. They ship it to us in Utah. They ship it to me. Uh, my wife isn't very happy about that because then I fill up our garage. Then I drive it down to the hacker space and a few of us get together and we start architecting this out. 
Uh, 20 pelican cases, like these giant pelican cases that show up at his house and his wife. Like, I'll be sitting next to him and he's like, I, yeah, just, well, grab Chris, which is like our buddy who also is here. Grab Chris and have him drag it to the garage, you know? Like, it's <laughs> like, so, so we started about a month out this year getting everything architected, designed, and started to do all that. Uh, um, got everything set up at the hacker space. Uh, get as much of it done as possible that we can get everything pre-configured beforehand. Uh, and then we throw it in a few of those guys' trucks. They drive it down while I fly in first class. Uh, it's just the way things happen, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then we get on site and we get here Thursday and we're up until about 2 o'clock in the morning getting things set up, getting the knock up and running so that we can start running Friday morning. Uh, but I would say that it honestly takes a good month or two before the show that we start architecting, designing, configuring. Uh, and, and really provisioning everything that we need for the show. So, right. And that's once we have the hardware. Before that, we're already planning what we're doing for the network for the U.S. show before we go to the Asia show. So we were having conference calls talking about U.S. and where we were going to, like, who we were going to partner with, how, like, who was coming, how many people we, you know, could get approvals for, um, how we would handle moving gear around, uh, what were things we were missing last year? All of that stuff started before the Asia show, before we ever went out to Singapore. And so, uh, and then as soon as Singapore ends, then we just start running hard on US. And it's, you know, we have a call at least once a week with just the Black Hat and UVM staff. Um, and then we have multiple calls with, you know, with Fortinet, with Ruckus, with you know, the guys at Splunk, everybody would have different conference calls. With us. So we had like four conference, call, conference calls a week for like four months. Yeah. And that's when the rest of our life is already conference calls because we're both SEs and yeah. that's just what you do. So, Kevin, anything else, sir? Yeah. How many people did it take to set up in 24 hours all the classes? How many people did it take to set up? How many? Total, total, well, again, 21 network guys, so they went out and deployed all 23, because we need some credit here. We actually did something, right? Prove it. Um, <laughs> so 21 network guys, and then two guys with clipboards, um, and then I think it's 50 of the conference associates, and they all help out, like, you know, laying down cables and wiring up the classes and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, so it's 70-plus people. And, you know, to Bart's point, we get in Thursday, normally midday to the afternoon, and then we start staging everything out. And, to, you know, he said, like, you know, we're normally up to about 2 in the morning. We go to sleep, and we wake up at 7, or we're down here at 7 for an 8 o'clock start time, and then we just run until it's done, which was 3 a.m. So, seven hours before the training started. We don't have sleep a lot here. Say that again. Yes, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I thought I saw a hand over there. Anybody? Yeah. Go ahead. Did you say is it community driven or content driven? Is that the question? Corporate driven. Oh man, you're putting me in a corner, man. <laughs> yeah. So, what was the, wait, what was the is question? it community driven or is what? it corporate driven? Black Hat. The network? Oh, Black Hat? Um, well, I think it's a bit of both, right? I mean, like, we all like to get paid and we all work for companies. So, if we also, we hate corporations rage against the machine, um, then we're a bunch of frauds because we all get a paycheck. That's um, true. But honestly, everybody who's here who's setting this stuff up, all these guys, like I said, all these like, the, the college students are all here, you know, they're taking their time to come out and do it, they're volunteers. Like these guys are coming out, they're professionals and they're taking their PTO to come out and set up a network, you know, for the love. So community wise, there's a huge community around Black Hat and within Black Hat. And, you know, and that doesn't just go for us. I mean, the review board guys are extremely community driven individuals. Um, so content wise, it's also for the love. Um, we wouldn't do it otherwise. A little bit of both. Can you go to the mic? Because I'm having I'm having a hard time hearing you. Because the briefings at the black black hat cost more. So if it's a community druid, why does it cost more? 
I, I still need to step at the line. Of so if the if the event is community driven, right? So it still costs a whole lot to organize. Yeah, I've got relatively. I mean, this house. <laughs> like you're asking about why, why does Black Hat cost a lot? Because it's a business. I, I I don't have a better answer than that. I mean, other than like legitimately, it's a business. At the end of the day, like I said, we all like to get paid. Um, it started as a business. It's always been a business. Um, but there is a significant community element in here that helps keep it going and helps keep the content going well. And all of you guys are a part of that. Um, it's uh, you know, but again, to to my earlier point, like that's outside our circle of influence. So. Oh no, no problem. Yeah. Thanks. Zeus, yeah. Now um, today, this this year was a really weird year. Like every like, so this volume of attacks against each other was really high. Um, people trying to sneak into the knock. People dropping USB keys around the space and stuff. And like with. Uh, like there was, it was high activity. People taking shots at our registration network again. Like we had everything you could possibly imagine was going on this week during the show, and that's why we do it. <laughs> like I mean, like honestly, it's like um, it's super fun. Like I mean, like it's just like it, it's an interesting environment to be in. Where literally every way someone someone can attack you happens all in the span of a couple of days, like and they and they come hard. Like so, I I think the biggest thing is like people want to be like I I hack Black Hat. Like or, you know we had a bunch of people who want like even press and stuff. They want to come into the knock and they all want to come in in a big group and get a tour and stuff like that. And I'm like, well, this is a secure facility. Like I don't want you to be standing there looking at one of our screens and you lean down and plug a USB into something with a rubber ducky and now you're like writing your story that's, you know, the day I hacked Black Hat. Like, again, that's, we're not interested in having that happen to us. And so if anybody who was outside of our team came into the knock for whatever reason, VIPs or whatever, um, we were right next to them. Like, and more than one of us normally. So, yeah, we're super protective about that. Again, we don't want the black guy. Go ahead. What would happen if somebody managed to do something really bad? We wouldn't see. I wouldn't. Next year. <laughs> we wouldn't. See <laughs> next year, right. Right. No. Um, I mean, it really depends on what what you define really bad as. Obviously, we'll take reaction. Uh, my biggest concern is keeping the network up and keeping you guys safe. So, if something really bad happened that I couldn't keep the network up or I couldn't keep you guys safe. Uh, we, we'd be in some, some good trouble. But obviously we know the... the what would happen to the person? If uh, I found them, it, it would depend on the severity of what they were doing. A lot, in a lot of cases, you know, like people are... Are you planning something? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's say, hypothetically, I was dropping USBs around the space. <laughs> like, um, you know, uh, it would just depend on the severity of it. Again, we see you guys attacking each other like crazy. We're watching these things happen. We're watching it happen in classes. And, you know, there's only so much we can do about that. We don't know if that's part of the lab or if that's genuinely malicious. Um, we'll know if you try to go outside of where of the box that we put you in. And at that point, even then, we sit there and go, should we just watch them for a minute and see what they do? You know, like, and then, uh, Normally, we'll just be like, all right, boot them, you know, and then you're just not on our network anymore. And then if it keeps you to go somewhere, you keep coming back, and then we're going to go find you. And he's not small. <laughs> it's another fat joke. You it's said not, you no, it's not a fat joke. You're husky. It's not a fat yeah. joke. Gosh, you're so sensitive. It, so, so the story about Zeus, it, it wasn't serious at all because it was literally a class that was legitimately sending payloads into their, their lab network that they moved to, to the cloud. They moved all of their labs out to the cloud and they were sending payloads off to the cloud. And, and again, that's what makes our job difficult is had we just sat in the knock and killed it, we would have affected somebody's training experience. And that's where we have to start weighing things and say, all right, you know, is this something that we get rid of or is it, do we just let it go? And it's like, well, let's go up there and we'll call somebody on the radio and say, hey, can you go over to, you know, whatever, man 
handle AJ or so, I. Or so we have to do our due diligence, but in that case, it wasn't anything that was that was malicious but intended. So yeah, if somebody's hammering our reg network, then that's a much bigger that's issue. That's a bigger obviously. difference. Yeah, there's a difference there. So Zeus could have been bad if it was a legitimate attack, but obviously, being a training course, sending Zeus out. Wasn't and for I, and I guess I guess I can give one example on the you mentioned the law enforcement thing. If like there have been instances in the past at Blackout where people have done things not just on this network but on the hotels network and stuff like that, these like like a casino is not someone to mess with like in any way, shape, or form, including their network guys. Like they're really good. Like so when you're talking, if you're in your hotel room, you're like I'm going to do a thing. You're probably going to leave that room soon, you know, and we're never going to see <laughs> some guys in like a, not on a, your own decision. A leisure suit's going to come pick you up and drag you out to the desert, like I like <laughs> never to be heard from again. So, yeah, I mean, they they have good teams, you know, taking care of their stuff too, and so it's uh, as far as like what's going to happen to people or is law enforcement involved. There have been people like who have done things on the hotel networks where they've been hauled off. So. You know, no way. Yeah, I mean, Second. <laughs> That's not even true. Actually, I say I say that it's a little bit in jest. I don't think DEFCON is the most dangerous network because, oh man, I'm like, you're, you're I shouldn't even. Yeah, I shouldn't even say this. <laughs> so here's the thing. Like again, I I just don't think it is at DEFCON. There are fabulous games and prizes. Like, so we have 60 different contests where you can go and take the skills that you have and fire them at something and maybe you get into DEF CON for life. That's cool. Or you get something shiny or you get like, you know, prizes worth up to dollars. And so you, there's, there's a reward for going in and doing those things. And in here you have each other. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, we're, you know, we're not, we don't have a bunch of contests here at Black Hat for you to focus those new, you know, tricks and tips on. And, uh, and you guys are professionals. And so this is what you do all day. You're very good at it. And you're getting better at it every day. And so you're really aggressive. <laughs> Switch some decaf. Go ahead, man. So, so that's an interesting thing that you bring that up. It, it, yeah, so for anybody good. else that didn't hear, do we have any special considerations for Wi-Fi encryption, et cetera? So we, we had this conversation with both Ruckus and Fortinet because providing the wireless, um, how many people were here last year? Enough folks who were here, yeah. So folks that were here last year, you may have seen uh, we had a captive portal for a little bit that you could use on the Aruba wireless. So Aruba ran it last year. Uh, and they had a captive portal that you could stand up, get a certificate pushed, use 802.1x, and you had unlimited bandwidth, etc. It's more secure that way, but we had amazing amounts of people freak out at people us because obviously pushing a certificate out. of somebody's machine at a black hat show or DEF CON, what it, it's just not okay. And you guys right? don't come to us with your complaints. We find out about it on Twitter. So <laughs> it's like, you're, like, oh, you're very public facing yeah. people. The internet um, is mad again. So, so we certainly had conversations about how to do that, whether or not we wanted to use full 802.1x, full encryption certificates and all that kind of stuff. But we didn't want to piss you guys off. I really want you guys to know, we think about you through all of this. And, and all the planning. All the planning. When how I'm sitting up at 3 around? in the morning working on this, I'm thinking about how you guys. Um, so, so we actually Especially that guy. kept it down a little bit for the user experience. We only use a pre-shared key. Um, it's, it's really not the most secure, but yeah, you guys don't the like the most secure apparently. People complain about that kind of stuff. So um, it's, it's interesting. So uh, that was one that we had to come up with and we, we worked around that. That may be something that we look at in the would, future. Yeah, would we'll you guys about. prefer that? Yes, yes, like, no. no. Mm. It's not helping guys. Like, by show of public Wi Fi, so expect it to be public Wi Fi, do your own encryption, etc. At that point, right? You're a Starbucks, so <laughs> I, I have privacy on my toilet. I don't know about you. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, all, touche. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's it all 
it all depends on you guys, like I said. So we've had those conversations and we've talked about what to do and what kind of encryption we can do there. Uh, but that takes other tools and other steps and it changes the user experience. And, and we listen to you guys. So, I mean, if, if, if I lit that up and everybody had a captive portal uh, and got a certificate pushed to them, then, then I probably would have heard about it on Twitter and we would have changed it and we would have had a big PR release and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's certainly taken into consideration, but, but nothing amazing. We so, tried to do it and you got freaked out. So Probably time for one more, so let's make more. it the best. Oh, that guy. Oh, I'm, I'm dang doing. it, then this guy. <laughs> Go ahead. So do we have any protection against rogue APs? So a little bit. We've got a few things that we can do and, and certainly scan for those rogue APs and keep track of it, but it's not as simple as it seems in, in a, an environment that you're standing up overnight and then tearing it down less than a week later uh, to get all that going. There is rogue AP scanning. Um, I will tell you that Mandalay does some of that as well to, to protect their own network, uh, and we do some as well, but didn't see too much of that this year. This year, we just left the access points on the floor to keep you guys guessing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Encrypt like everybody's watching. Mm -hmm. That's right. Three more minutes. So go ahead. Oh, that guy. Oh, they you're, both, you're, we're going to give both of you the questions, and then we're done. Cool. That's it. What surprised, what surprised us? you? I, said, I, think, I, I think my surprise, and I shouldn't have been surprised, was just the amount of encrypted traffic this year. Like, it was incredible. Like, you guys are like, like that, we that thought we were being funny, been the case. like like you really are encrypting everything. Like I, we were talking to some folks that came in. You know, we, we've been telling people outside of the glass about what we're doing as they come in, and um, and I was like, yeah, it's like I'm really surprised. But look at this bar. We have this bar graph up, and I'm like, all of that is encrypted traffic. And then you see, you know, uh, Facebook and Twitter and Skype and all this other stuff. And I was like, and I, that, I think that's just the press. Like right there, and the rest is our attendees. <laughs> so, sorry for last one. one. That's it. Uh, we don't keep any of your nothing. Data. We don't. I, I, once gone, again, guys. you guys would yell at me. If yeah, I, if like if I wouldn't want somebody doing it to me. We don't do it to you. If the data is there, like we use it to protect, you know, like you guys, and you guys from each other, and us, and all the other stuff like that. And when it's done, it's gone. Like I mean, you like can, some people are like, "Oh, we'd love to mine that data," and I'm like, mm, "Sorry, you can." You can. We have pretty graphs. We do have. We have reports. Like we'll have like historical reports that we've been capturing throughout the time and stuff like that. But once it's gone, it's gone. There, there were people that asked to have that kind of data. And yeah. we, again, thinking about you guys, that wasn't something that we were willing to compromise and do. So, so it's gone. Yeah. So I, I would. Love to. I, I think that's a good way to end. Like, yeah. Your guys, like, we, we care about You're you guys the most, and, yeah, and we care about your privacy, so, um, what's that? So IPv6? Thanks. Hey, that, he jumped in. That was in the there. last question. Yeah. No plans. We'll talk to you in a second, so, all right, thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.